Hello and welcome back to our DCOM tutorial series. So today we're going to have a little short video where we're going to talk about um, some animation stuff. Uh, particularly we are going to add a very basic new animation table and animation, the more copy one, but for um, a stationary object event. Um, so how our object events work, we have, um, you know, this is our object event graphics info. If you've added any object events or looked into them at all, you will have stumbled across this file. This stores all the info for our object events. It's in source data, object events, object event graphics info.h. Now we're going to look at this ho one specifically. It's just the last one in the list. Um, one of uh, the people in my Discord inspired this video because they were asking questions about how to do basically this, but with Scarberry. Uh, so helping them through that, I figured I might as well just make a short video on the topic. So um, if we scroll in our object event graphics info, ho oh, we can see a bunch of things. There's palettes, there's some, these are sizes, shadow size, um, some things, blah, 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 blah. Object event base OAM. 32 by 32, these are the things that deal with the tiling of the sprites, uh, because even though sprites don't seem like they're tiled, the game actually treats them in 8x8 tiles just like it treats the actual tile sets in 8x8 tiles. You just, it happens under the hood. But we see here we have our anim tables and our pick tables, and we can see them all the way up. Anim standard, anim standard, anim standard, pick table Lugia, pick table Greta, pick table leaf, pick table red. These are where the um, the animation states, the different animations are stored in these tables, and then the actual frames for our um, for our objects are stored in the pick tables. So um, if we want to look at the pick table, we can search for the pick table and we can find it. So this takes G object event pick ho o, um, and this is the zeroth frame, zeroth frame, zeroth frame, zeroth frame, first frame, zeroth frame, first frame, zeroth frame, first frame. And that may seem weird to you, like why is it using zero? zero 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 one zero zero one zero zero one whatever um, it says there why isn't it just one zero and one one that doesn't really make any sense and it's because the animation table um, for you know holo is using a bunch of standard animations instead of instead of creating its own animation for every state um, the the game is taking these normal standard animations face south, face north, face west, face east, and it is applying them in the the anim table for ho um, so that it doesn't have to you know create its own. And these standard animations, how they work is they point to a specific frame. So they're like, well, for facing south, we're going to do frame zero. Frame zero is facing south. That's what most things start as. We can actually look at some of the objects if we want to. That's a good idea. So if we go to graphics, we go down to object events, we go to picks, we go to Pokemon, view, yeah, let's do large icons. We can see, um, you know, these Pokemon, here's ho -Oh. it's facing down, facing down. Groudon, we have down and left, but we don't have up. We have one of these, like Zigzagoons though, it's facing all of these different directions. It's got down, up, left, down, down, up, up, left, left. What is this? It's facing, 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 walking, 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 walking. And this is a standard animation table right here. Um, and these are the standard positions for your normal walking. So if you want a character that has that is, if, if you want to add an object that, you know, you want to be able to walk around, you need to add a, the object event pick table needs to have all of these uh, states and it. it needs to have a facing down, a facing up, a facing left. It needs to have a walking down, walking up, and walking left. And they need to be in this order if you want to use the standard animation table. But if you don't want to use the standard animation table, um, for some reason, whatever reason, um, you it doesn't really matter what order the uh, the uh, the picks are in. Um, but you obviously just need to create it however you want it to be created. So in this case, I want Ho Oh to be flapping its wings in its default state. That is what uh, the person in my Discord wanted was Skarmory to be flapping its wings in a default state. So I just added this Ho Oh to here. You know, obviously it's not supposed to be there, but 
Um, again, so the animation in this animation table is defined by its movement action. Uh, um, so when, as we were looking at those pictures, the zigzagoon was walking down. Well, those pick those frames in the pick aren't act. They are they are not accessed unless we are using an animation that accesses them. And how it does that is we are given a a movement condition for our for our our anim table and that movement condition is uh, being indexed and we are pulling out the animation table for that movement condition but if we don't want our character to be moving in a normal sense if we don't want it to have animation standard animations for walking left right up and down by giving it movement actions in our scripts you know when you're moving up moving down moving left moving right running uh, left sliding left sliding up those types of things um, if we don't want it to access those normal those normal animations from the, you know from the movement command directly um, we need to you know create some changes so the start with facing south facing down zero like that is movement type none our our zeroth position if we are if we have movement type none defined for our um, for our object it is going to take the zeroth animation in the list no matter what um, if we change you know our our movement type around as you can see there's only two frames on this ho -oh. by making it movement type face up face up is one more and it's just taking the next frame because of that. Because if you remember how our zigzagoon looked, it was face down, face up, face left, or zero, one, two. So those those movement types index to just being static on those frames. So we can see that here, if we just change our movement type to face up, that that's how it's going to work. If we do face down, you know, it doesn't change because again, face down is in that position where it's just taking that zeroth indexed sprite. So if we gave this ho-oh, -oh, you know, random movement actions with a new animation table that didn't line up to the animation table that we see there, the things might not work as, you know, it's not gonna flap its wings perfectly every time, whereas it might do that with the animation table that has been created for it. But anyway, we want the zeroth index to be flapping its wings all the time. So we are creating our new animation table right here. Now we create it just by copying the one above it uh, so that we have the format. It is static const union anim command pointer const to an s anim table ho -oh, oh new array. That's complicated. What does that mean? It is basically a um, a an array of functions uh, that are going to be there. They're the anim command um, functions or pointers to functions that are going to be called when we are access when we're you know we're putting our object events into when they're loading into the game loading in on screen they're given their animation based on their movement type um, so we are creating a table for that to be accessed and of course we need to, to change the uh, the sanim table to our new table as well that is obviously important we can't keep it on the normal ho one so we are creating this new table and we are giving it a new animation so well, what is this animation and how do we create an animation they're the basic ones are very simple um the the, you know, the structure for defining them is static cons. I shouldn't use the word structure. It doesn't matter. Static cons union anim command. And if you see, that's most of what we were just looking at because that is the type of those function calls uh, that the, the, the table is for. Um, if we go back down, obviously that is the same because it's just making a table of these. Um, it's just making an array of them, of these functions, these anim commands. Um, now these are defines. They are a little wacky. We don't need to look at them because there's not too much to glean from them. The important things that you need to know are the first index um, is the, the frame itself the position in the picture so if you have you know this this ho -oh was just two pictures wings open wings down wings up wings down um zero is going to be um well actually you know we got to think about this a bit more than that the pick table for ho -oh is here we have if we're looking here this is three so this is the third frame 
uh, the third frame, zero, one, two, three. Um, the third frame here is zero. The fourth frame here is one. So we're just taking these two frames. And then this frame here is the actual frame for the picture. So this, this first value here is the frame position in the object event pick tables. So it is what you know, zero indexed um, is the overworld frame given. But because this isn't just zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, with a picture that has seven different frames to it, it's, it's re you know, it's repeating how we had it set the repeat. If I wanted to, I could delete this and I could delete this and now it's just zero and one and they're actually in the zero and ones position. So I could go here and I could change this to be zero and I could change this to be one and I could change this to be zero and I could change zero, one. And this is the exact same thing now. It's doing the same thing. Um, I just even further broke the former animation table, but since this is the new animation table, nothing's gonna be broken. This is gonna work exactly how I wanted it to. Um, but anyway, that is what the first position is. The second is the number of frames in game that it is displayed for. Completely different meaning of the word frame. Instead of the uh, the actual image frame, we're talking about the, like FPS, frames per second. Eight frames is, you know, not even a full second. It's not close. If we wanted it to run for 30 frames, that's half a second. If we wanted it to run for 60 frames, that is a full second. The GBA runs at 60 FPS. Um, so unless you're lacking it horribly, but I'm not sure that, uh, I'm not sure how much the, the animations are affected by that. If it's going to skip over or delay the animation, if something were to lag it out, I have no idea to be honest. But anyway, that is the, the, the duration. Uh, that the animation is going to run for. So this is just, it's pretty quick. It's just flapping its wings every eight frames or every 16 frames um, is one flap. So since this is the zero indexed, this is going to be movement action none. So the movement action for our, uh, you know, movement type none, we have it defined here. There's one more thing that we, you know, you want to consider if you're doing something like this where you're taking out an animation. I'm not necessarily suggesting that you should take out all the animations for stuff and do things like this, but the general process for creating an animation, a new animation is the same. If you wanted to replace one of these ho animations with something, you could replace the actual animation. If you want to replace, um, you know, the player animation with something, this is how you would do it. Um, if you wanted to, you know, replace the, the wheelie front south, if you want to make it slower or something or jumpy or I don't know, it doesn't matter. You just change the anim commands um, and, or you change the table, you move the table around, whatever, but just be aware that when you're messing with these tables, that they're indexed by the movement actions by the game. The game, like when you, if you want to, you know, completely wipe out a bunch of animations and replace them with your own, make sure they're in the proper order. Because if you start, you know, telling the game to make your character walk up and you have the walk up at the animation table assigned to uh, do a spin, then, you know, obviously your game's gonna look kind of whack. Um, so that's, you know, pretty basic as far as animations gets. We can look at our example in the game. If we just go down here, this is just our ho -Oh. It is flapping its wings pretty quickly. It looks nice. Um, that's, you know, a standard animation for it. I didn't, I didn't create this myself. It's actually from ho -Oh flap wings. This is just ho -Oh flap wings new. If you see here, this was exactly what this looked like before. Um, but, you know, I wasn't really trying to create anything brand new, just go over the general process of editing these animations. Um, there, the animations for um, normal sprites, like let's say my, my Zelda bomb, if you've seen that, the bomb that explodes, sorry, and replaces Rock Smash, and it also has some extra effects. I add that as a normal sprite, but those sprites, um, in the, the, that's actually in the field effect table because um, the field effects have a lot of different sprites with animations. The, the, the animation tables for those look exactly the same as this. They, they have a bunch of animations like this. Well, the bomb one doesn't have a bunch, but some of them like the arrow and the, um, and the hook shot have a bunch of animations um, for all the different directions. Um, and uh, uh, 
they have, but the, the, the animations themselves look exactly like this with these Anim Command frames. I forgot to talk, I forgot to mention the jump. Um, Anim Command jump, this jumps to the zeroth index in this Anim Command. So this is just going to keep going over and over and over and over again. If you only do it like this, it's going to end at, well, you would actually put um, Anim Command end here uh, like this. Um, you put anim command end, and it's going to end the animation. Uh, that is how you would normally end it, um, but we obviously want it to loop over and over again because we want uh, it to be flapping its wings, so this is how we do it with a jump to jump back. I think there might be a loop command. Yeah, there's a loop command here too. Um, the difference, th this is just going to loop eight times, and then it's going to continue on, uh, whereas we want it to jump back continually. Um, so, you know, whatever the functionality that you want in your command, you can do it however you want. Um, if you're wondering what the affine animations are, I'm not going to go over that right now. Maybe we'll do a future video on it, but I haven't messed with them that much. So the affine animations are taking advantage of a different part of the GBA's PPU, I guess. Uh, the pixel processing unit, uh, I think, is what is doing the heavy lifting there. I could be wrong, though. Um, and they perform more uh, complicated, affine related transformations, uh, which is kind of like linear algebra type related things like stretching, shearing, rotating, and uh, that kind of thing. Uh, which you normally, you know, if you want to rotate a sprite without the affine stuff, you have to actually physically draw each frame being rotated. I had to do that for my Zelda spinning attack. Um, but if you want to have it spun without, uh, without having to draw every frame yourself, you can use the affine animations, but I cannot help you that much on that as of now. We'll see in the future, though. Anyway, that is all for this video, so we're going to wrap up. If you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment here or in the Discord. Um, that way we can help you out. Otherwise, we will see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.